There are a few things I know about Doctor Who. One is that in high school it inspired an acquaintance of mine to wear a very long scarf. Another thing I know about Doctor Who is it's been on television for a very long time. And the final thing I know about Doctor Who is it inspires some, some rather devout devotion from the people who watched it, which is probably why it's been on the air for such a long time, and also probably why a game like this, Doctor Who's Solitaire Story Game, could exist. Doctor Who's Solitaire Story Game is the, the one of the greatest choose-your-own-adventure type games ever. It's like an uber choose-your-own-adventure book. There's four books you get with the game. You get an events book, an adventure book, an enemy book, and a rule book. And you use these books to create a seemingly endless adventure, and that's what this game has over the other sorts of choose-your-own-adventure games, is it doesn't have to end. You can keep playing again and again, which is great for me because I would, I would really get into the world of a choose-your-own-adventure type book, um, but then it would end. Even the ones where you were allowed to build a character, there's this series of books, um, Lone Wolf, I think they were called, that I, I've been trying to collect all of them over the years so that I could play the whole long set of books. Um, and you could, you could take your character from book to book to book, but eventually you would get to the last book and then it would end. This game, it doesn't have to end unless you die or fall in love, as far as I've found so far in my playing. So what you do in the game is you have this TARDIS, which is some sort of time-space vehicle. I don't know exactly, I think it's the phone, bo the phone booth, or the, yeah, the, yeah, the police public call box that this fellow is in goes to this spaceship type thing. And you can use that to go to all sorts of different worlds. And the adventure book has all these worlds and times that you can go to. And you can actually, in between adventures, choose which one you want to go to. So if you want to go to a holiday location, which is my favorite, you can go through the book and find a holiday location, then try and pilot your time-space vehicle to this holiday location and then take in some entertainment. Um, the thing is, wherever you go, there's going to be some sort of enemy there, and you don't know when they're going to show their head what the enemy is or what their secret goal is, and so that's where the, the enemy book comes in. There's all sorts of enemies in there, um, and you never know what you're going to run across. Um, then there's also the, the, the events book, and that kind of has the standard sort of paragraphs um, that will explain different things that are going on. Another thing that this game has that a lot of games don't have, including Tales of Arabian Nights and some other games, is a real feeling that you're making a choice. Um, when you, in a given turn, you have a lot of different things you can do. You get companions and you can decide to split up from your companions in order to have them do something and, you know, uh, do something else yourself. And then, you, you know, you have different actions you can do in a different turn and you'll roll on different tables based on that. But it's all very open about what the possible results are. You, you won't be making a decision only to find that some bizarre thing happens that you really had no inkling that it would happen. Each of the adventures has a sort of progression. You'll have, uh, you know, one or two or maybe, you know, one or two actions that you can do when you first get to a place usually involving exploring or fixing up your time-space vehicle or um, if you're in a holiday location you can relax um, and then as you start to discover more about the enemy different options open up uh, for what you can do. You can investigate, you can seek information, you can try to get help uh, from the locals um, and then you know after you've discovered the en enemy then you're in the phase where you're you're planning on how you're going to defeat the enemy, you're researching possible um, items or, or different weaknesses in the enemy that you could help. And so, so it's kind of episodic in a way, each, in, each adventure, you're really building up um, to this climax and as you get further along, your, your abilities improve in this given locale and then also the uh, enemy gets, starts coming more and more, you know, and um, it, can, it can really start picking off uh, your your resources, um, which can be difficult. Um, another thing you can do in this game is, is level up. You can increase your abilities. You can take companions with you, which I think is great. There's just uh, a lot of variety you can get out of the game because of this. Um, you can get different equipment come to, uh, to sort of help your doctor and your companions out. 
Um, you can invent equipment, you can find equipment, you can do all sorts of stuff to, um, to uh, kind of continue things. And there's this real um, narrative flow uh, that I think, I imagine would follow a series. Because this is based on a series, I think that's actually a strong suit. I don't know any very much about the series. I told you pretty much what I know at the beginning, but because it is a series of a television series, there's this rich, very rich. You get the sense that there's a lot going on, and it's a very well developed world, especially since it's been going on for so long, and there's all these fans devoted to it. Um, you you get the sense that it's a world kind of like our own world. You know, I, I can walk down the street in the place where I live and I can see little glimpses of people's lives, right? But they, they, they hint at something more than what I'm seeing on the surface. Uh, the, the certain ornaments that people put in their yard, that, that tells you something about them, but maybe not exactly uh, who they are. Just, you know, it, it hints at something. And that's, what, that's what's great about this game. It feels like there is um, more going on than you you uh, maybe immediately know. Perhaps if you know the show and have seen every single episode, you would kind of you would know where this character's from and why they are the way they are a little bit better. But I kind of like that I don't know that, and it feels more like an exploration in that respect. One problem you might have with the game: there's some uh, some bits that are not clear. In, in the wording of things. There are some uh, definite typos. Uh, not a lot though, and especially considering that this is not a work for money, it's just a work for passion. And it, a nice thing about that is it's a solitaire game. So, so what if you get the rules wrong? You're playing by yourself. It doesn't matter so much. And because it's a work of passion, the designer is very on top of this game. He will answer any questions rather quickly, it seems. And if not him, it seems like there's a, there's a pretty strong following behind the game as well. Um, lots of resources out there. Oh, and expansions and lots of things that people have made um, for this game. So for those of you who don't know uh, where you can get this game, you can go to um, BoardGameGeek.com and go to the Doctor Who Solitaire Story Game page. Uh, there's four files, each for a different book. Print them out. I did a rather poor job of printing mine. Uh, the, the pictures look a lot nicer on the computer than my printout. Um, it's full color. I, I did the insides black and white because I'm cheap. But it will run you some ink, but that's about it. You do need a six-sided die. I recommend having a notebook handy. There's a lot of notes you need to take. And write down the paragraphs when something happens if you need to refer back to them later. That's something I learned the hard way. That's the Doctor Who Solitaire Story Game.